Say, Sherlock, did you skip any part of your education when you were young? <laughs> Elementary, my dear WhatsApp. <laughs> Hello, this is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thank you for tuning in. Today, from 1941, we have the first part of The Spider Returns. Warren Hull, as Richard Wentworth, a.k.a. The Spider, returns in his second Spider Cereal. The first was The Spider's Web from 1938. This is another action-packed serial from the Pulp Magazine. So here we go with The Spider Returns. criminals, the mysterious and masked gargoyle, backed by millions from an unknown power, attempts to wreck production for national defense. The police, baffled, seek the aid of Richard Wentworth, a famous amateur criminologist. Sometimes masquerading as the spider, thus concealing his identity from both criminals and the police, Wentworth pits his wits and strength against the gargoyle in preventing sabotage, subversive activities, and other crimes. You're a big nap. Why don't you do what I tell you? Well, I'm trying to, Rita. Hey, hey. Well, what's keeping you, honey? Hey, it's nay on that honey stuff. Haney's a name, and this ain't no wedding cake I'm cutting into. Temperamental artist, huh? <laughs> you know, this is one of the boss's special jobs. the orders. Money ain't nothing. What we want is the plans and specifications. Now get them quick. When we get to the street, scatter and then we... Money's gonna be the death of you, Brown. You like it too well. Oh, it's a waste to leave it here. Well, we're leaving it here. This is orders. Well, we got what we want. Let's go.
fighters on the loose again. Better see who turned in the alarm. You know, Dick, you getting back into that spider outfit almost knocked me goofy. <laughs> I'm not over it yet. Oh, and incidentally, you're going to have an awful lot of explaining to do to a young lady by the name of Nita Van Sloan. You promised her the spider was dead, and for keeps. Any message, Jenkins? Yes, sir. Commissioner Kirk called, said he must contact you at once. Most important. Well, you didn't tell him I was out, did you? Oh, no, sir. I had Ram Singh put on record number 12. What record is that? That's the one where you're in the laboratory on the experiment and say you're too busy to talk. <laughs> Good, Jenkins. You always do the right thing. You better have Ram Singh join us. Sure will. I don't like the commissioner phoning so quickly. Looks like he's got a line on the spider already. He has. The janitor got a good look at him, and the spider left his trademark on the prisoner. You know, uh, Commissioner Kirk always did have a suspicion that you were the spider. Only a suspicion. No proof. Well, anyway, he's checking up, and I don't like it. You sent for me, Saeed? Yes, Ram Singh. I need the help of all of you in this crisis. Tonight's attempt convinces me that we're up against a strong organization headed by a powerful and brainy man. Robbing a safe don't take any brains. Yes, but this gang left thousands of dollars untouched. They were after only one thing, this. Few people knew what was in Holden's safe, yet they were after this and this alone. Now that you have it, what will you do with it? Give it back to the owner, of course. Oh, no, and have to explain how I got it? I will never do. Besides, it's too valuable to be put in jeopardy twice. We've got to guard this with our lives until we can turn it over to the government safely. The government? What's the government got to do with it? Everything. It's a government secret these men were after. A secret worth more than money in times like this. A secret that might mean the difference between defeat and victory in time of war. Go right, Jehoshaphat. And it's in that bag? What is it? You know too much for your own good already. Now, with this in our hands, there are bound to be many efforts to recover it. And we've got to stop them. It's a dangerous job. I wish he would come on. This waiting is driving me daffy. Calm down, Haney. The gargoyle took it standing up. He said it was just one of those things. Nobody's fault. He wasn't even sore. Then what are we here for? They got Brown. Now, Brown is money mad. He'll talk if they offer him enough. Well, what can he tell? He knows no more than the rest of us do, and that's exactly nothing. He knows you, me, and the rest of the boys. Now, the boss is right. We must take care of Brown. Hey, speak only when you're spoken to. Our work is to wreck the defense program of this country at all costs. We are making progress. Sabotage is spreading throughout the industrial centers due to our efforts. The efforts of our workers. I don't need to repeat that your last operation was a failure due to the unexpected arrival of one called the Spider. That is of no account. We will take care of that publicity-seeking hound in due time. But this is important. One of our men is in the hands of the police. We must rescue him to make it impossible for him to talk again. Be gone. You're right, Holden. This is too big for local police. The G-men should handle it. Impossible. Once they've earned up my loss, I'm finished. Why, I have a $500,000 bound up for the guarantee of the completion of my contract. There must be some other way. My George, you're right. I know the very man. And while we don't always agree, he's clever and he's trustworthy. Yes, sir. Now, get me Mr. Richard Wentworth at once. Yes, sir. Now, see here, Holden, you can't hold out on this man. Tell him everything, follow his instructions, and if he can't help you, take my advice and call in the government men. The country's needs comes ahead of the dollar sign. Very well, Commissioner. I place myself in your hands, whatever you say. Good morning, Miss Vita. Morning, Jenkins. Mr. Wentworth is here, I hope. Yes, just finishing breakfast. Good. Uh, oh, uh, Jenkins, I suppose you know what he intends to do. Well, uh, I have an idea. Well, we must stop it. All of us together can do it. I'm afraid you overestimate our ability. He's uh, stubborn. Well, so am I. I'll change his mind for him. Oh, good morning, Nita. Good morning. It's not a good morning. 
And I warn you, don't try to salt soak me. I've made up my mind. You hear that, Jackson? Nita's made up her mind. <laughs> Jackson, some breakfast for Nita, please. Oh, uh, nothing but coffee, thank you. Oh, here it is. Sleep well? Not a wink. None of us will if you persist in going back to work. Please don't. I ask you, please. Such a pretty please, too. So hard to resist. Oh, Nita, I have no choice in the matter. I promised Kirk I'd get on the job, the biggest one I ever tackled. All the jobs you tackle are big. Not as big as this one. These are troubled times. Each and every one of us must do his bit to defeat those people who are trying to destroy this country by sabotage. Come on. Be a good soldier, Nita. All right. When do we start? Now you're good girl. <laughs> Blake and McQuaid has a date, pronto. I think I better get word to him. Graham Singh has everything ready. I'll get the car. Good. Jenkins, you guard the Citadel while I'm gone. Yes. And what am I to do? You guard Jenkins. Oh. <laughs> Jenkins, he can't be serious with this thing. Everything's all right, warrior. Miss Nita is in full accord. Then everything will be what you call Jake, eh? Oh, very Jake. Your things are all ready. Right. Thanks. I won't be a minute. You were so dead against the spider going back to work. What made you change your mind? Well, when he convinced me that it was for the good of our country, I couldn't very well refuse. Love of country is a wonderful thing. Yes, but what I don't understand is why he's making up this Blinky McQuaid. Because Blinky McQuaid has a circle of acquaintances that we could never hope to reach. And I hope through him to be able to get a line on this new gang that's creating so much havoc in our defense industries. But that takes men with brains. Would they come from the underworld? Well, they usually start from there, and so will I, because I want to question that prisoner that Kirk has locked up. Hey, lady, I'm down on my luck. Could you give me 50 bucks for a cup of coffee? <laughs> well, I suppose I should break a bottle of champagne over your head to launch Blinky McWade on his career again. No, no, a thousand times no. <laughs> well, Lita, I'm on my way. Now, if anyone calls, be sure to put on the right record. All right. Well, Ram Singh, I've done my best. Long time no see. Well, I ain't glad to see you, boy. Thanks, Ed. Ah, oh, Pete. I thought you'd reformed. Hey, cut the wisecrack. This is the wrong rap. You I see, I'm... I know. I'm... All right. I'm Hello, ready. Tommy. Hi, Blinky. Got you again, Snapper. Hey, give me a room in a bath, will you? I ain't had one since I was here before. All right, Blinky. This is the best I can do. Well, you ought to be ashamed to admit it. Well, I won't be here long. I'll be out of here as soon as my mouthpiece gets the machinery working. I know, Blinker. I know. Hey, Mug. As long as we're going to be cellmates, we might as well get acquainted. My name is Blinky McQuaid. Mug. Thanks. That ain't nothing. I'm lucky they didn't take him away from me. Country's going to the dogs. Guys like me ain't got no protection. You don't see any of them big guys taking the rap, do you? Of course not. Well, it's every man for himself, and I ain't taking it. I know plenty, see, and unless they spring me, I'm gonna yap so loud this burger's gonna split wide open, and the big boys know it too. Well, you're lucky. They ain't give me no chance to get word to anybody. You're the first one I've seen. Ah, don't worry about that. I'll get word out for you when they spring me. You will? Uh... That's right of you. If I spilled anything to you, they'd knock us both off. Damn and who else? I ain't scared. I'm tough. I'll get word out for you. Nothing doing. I ain't taking no chances. What's your rap? Robbery. Murder, maybe. One of the gang was knocked off. Tough luck, too. We were promised five G's apiece. Five G? Gee, that's out of my class. My gang is pikers. I've been working for buttons. I'd sure like to get with an outfit like yours. I'd go places. Uh-uh. 
Nothing, Joe. Listen, buddy. I'm going to give you a tail talk. I'm going to sell uh -uh, myself. None you. of that now. Uh -uh. I'm afraid not. I've talked too much already. All right. Be stubborn. You were right, Winky. They sprung you. Better get going before somebody changes their mind. Ah, don't rush me. I gotta make my adieus. Hey, any message to go out? It's your last chance. No. I'll wait a little longer. And if nothing happens, I'll talk, and I'll talk plenty. Well, so long. Oh, I'm me. <laughs> so long, Cap. Well, any luck? A little. I just got back from an interview with Brown. He's scared. I couldn't get much out of him. Keeping him incommunicado will work in time. Have there been any more efforts to get to him? <laughs> A lawyer has been yelling his head off, threatens habeas corpus and what have you. Who is he? Respectable to all appearances. I put a tracer on him. We expect to get his background before long. Good. I found there is an organization. A big one. You keep Brown stewing and he'll talk. What did you find on him? Oh, nothing much. Nothing much is right. Some keys, money, pencil, match cover, and a metal disc. Boy, if this could talk, it'd probably tell us plenty. Yeah, it looks like an O on there. Funny thing about that. Found another one on the dead man. Letter A this time. Well, it's obvious they're identification discs. Uh, that crook was well healed. Have you noticed that money? Holden identified that as part of the money from his safe. Is he sure? Positive. He checked the serial numbers against his records. What gets me is why Brown didn't take it all. There were thousands there, yet he only took a few. Yeah. I've got it, man. Money. The gang were ordered to leave the money alone and to get only what they were sent for. But Brown couldn't resist. He took only part of it so that it wouldn't be missed. He double-crossed the man he was working for to get this money for himself. Well, that's good reasoning, but how will it help? He's scared to death, but I think money will tempt him. We'll offer him some, more than he's ever seen before, and a promise of protection. He might fall for it. <laughs> and who's going to put up all this money? Holden, of course. It's his jam. Now, you have Brown and the money at my house tonight, after dinner. You and Brown come alone. All right, whatever you say. Say, do you mind if I take this stuff back to my lab? My instruments might tell us something about it. Uh, go ahead. I suppose you know, Wentworth, that this is a little bit irregular, to say the least. Necessity makes us overlook technicalities. Well, I'm on my way. Now, don't forget, tonight's visit must be a secret. I'll be there with Brown at nine sharp. Good. That's him after him. Now it'll save a lot of trouble later. Somebody's trailing us. Let's give them a run for it. Okay. Slow down on our trap or tire. They're taking care of for time anyway. It's a fine thing. He didn't know we was trailing them, huh? Ah, dry up. No harm done. Well, you speak for yourself. I'm a wreck. Look at my nose. It improves your looks, if anything. I think we'll get something here. Evidently, Brown wrote some sort of memo on the flap and then erased it. This infrared process brought it out clear. Look. It spells Annadale with some figures after it. And that's what I make of it. Come on. Return to headquarters. I'll call you when I want you. I think I'll keep this just in case. That must be Kurt. 
He's always on time. Jackson, you stay here with Nita. Is Ram Singh at his post as ordered? Yes, sir. Keep your fingers crossed. Ah, good evening, Commissioner. Right on time. Take him in there and make him comfortable. Come on, you. Seconds. Understand, we're not to be disturbed. Right. Commissioner, I think we can dispense with the handcuffs. No man can feel at ease with them on. Thanks. What's the big idea? Believe it or not, Brown, we're trying to be your friends. You're in a bigger jam than you know. It might be well for you to talk. Ah, cut the double talk. I'm the guy that originated the three little monkeys. See nothing, hear nothing, and sing them. You double-crossed your boss and you know it. You'll never live to come to trial. Ah, who is? I know something your boss doesn't know. You took some money from Holden State. You're lying, Wentworth. I don't lie. You took the money in your orders, but to leave it alone. How did you know that? All right, Commissioner. You tell him. He might believe you. Listen, you fool. Every entrance to that jail was covered by your pals, ready to blast you down. Why didn't we bring them in? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because like you, they're nothing. Just tools of the one we want. We've got them all tabbed. Here's enough money to make you independent for life. We'll protect you. You can go anywhere you want, where none of your pals can find you. It's your one chance. Take it, or we'll turn you loose to be picked up in a gutter full of slugs. Well, what do you want me to do? Name the man from whom you take your orders, the one responsible for all the sabotage in this country. Why, I don't know it. We don't see him. Ah, uh, you must meet somewhere. Tell us what you know. We'll handle the rest. All right. I'll talk. I ain't taking the rap. I'll start with the meeting place. It ain't easy to get there. Oh, skip the details. Where is it? Well, you go down to the corner. Ah! Help Kurt. Good afternoon, Mr. Wentworth. Are the others here? Yes, sir. Some time ago. Your instructions were carried out to the letter. Only those on your list were admitted. Good. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That must be Wentworth now. I'm glad you're here. They were getting very uneasy. All right, don't miss the time. Now get at it. Right. Gentlemen, I'm sure that you all know Mr. Wentworth. Yeah, hi, 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 hi. I know that you are very anxious to learn why you were called here. Mr. Wentworth is back of this case, and I'm going to let him explain. Thank you. Gentlemen, we all know that our country is facing a grave crisis. We're engaged in a program of national defense that is the largest the world has ever known. All of you are manufacturing or financing something vital to that program. Recent events have convinced me that an element, a dangerous element, will stop at nothing to prevent you from making progress. There's only one word for it, gentlemen. Sabotage. Mr. Van Sloan, you're dealing in aviation, a vital need. You, more than any of the others, 
are concerned with sabotage. I appreciate the gravity of the situation. We all of us have experienced setbacks in carrying out government contracts. Have you any suggestions? Yes. You must check the background of every one of your employees. Eliminate any who object to investigation or whose past is not an open book. Mr. Westfall. Yes, Mr. Wentworth. Your chemical plant is also vital. What I said before goes for you, too. And you, Mr. Cartwright? Count me in. I'm willing to cooperate 100%. And I know I speak for all. Isn't that right, Mr. Gaylord? I'm sure you do. Every financial firm in the city will cooperate. What do you think, Mr. McLeod? Well, uh, I'm puzzled. About what, Mr. McLeod? Well, we are not the only ones engaged in government work in this district. Why aren't the others here? I can explain that. We thought it best to interview a few of you at a time. It would be dangerous for too large a group to gather here. <laughs> come, come, Wentworth. Surely no one would attempt to do us bodily harm. Mr. Holden, I'm afraid that they would stop at nothing. Why? Why? Gentlemen, gentlemen, believe me, I'm not exaggerating. This menace is far greater than you imagine. Got him all right. And where are you taking me? You'll find out. Government business. Where's the nearest telephone? Nearest is Annadale. Airport. Mile down the road. Did you say Annadale? Yep, Annadale. About a mile. Get me there quick. You got him all right. Yeah. Now you go to 10,000 feet and fly straight to the boss. I savvy. Load him in. Bring him on. Thanks a lot. I can make it from here. I won't go. I tell you. I won't go. That. No, you can't make me. I won't go. I tell you. Wait a minute. Now don't make us get rough. Because when we get rough, we get rough. All right. I'm helpless. I'll go. Wait! I'll take that prisoner. Shed those guns, all of you. Hurry up! Get over here, Holden. This man's going with me. And the first man who tries to follow, I'll drop. I 
plans for this ship now. The metal and fool, I'll finish him. Not here, he'd be found. It must look like an accident. Put Wentworth in the plane. I don't get it. Sure you do. Wentworth's gone with you. Didn't I say it must look like an accident? <laughs> so he's got ideas of his own. All right, load him in. I hope he's right. The boss don't like changing plans. All right, I'm off. going to happen to the man strapped in the chair? That gangster at the switch has the answer. Is it a warning message that will be played into the telephone mouthpiece? Is the police secretary fooled? Don't miss the fatal time bomb. Directing the acts of a band of ruthless criminals, the mysterious and masked gargoyle, backed by millions from an unknown power, attempts to wreck production for national defense. The police, baffled, seek the aid of Richard Wentworth, a famous amateur criminologist. Sometimes masquerading as the spider, thus concealing his identity from both criminals and the police, Wentworth pits his wits and strength against the gargoyle in preventing sabotage, subversive activities, and other crimes. Single-handed, the spider overpowers a gang and prevents the theft of secret government plans. But other crimes continue. Factories blow up, ships burn at sea, a bomber crashes, powder plants explode. Come in, Annadale. Annadale answering. Go ahead. Why the delay? Why isn't Holden delivered? Plans change. Coming by car. Wentworth interfered. Wentworth? What was done? Use plane to destroy him. Nothing to worry about.
Leave there at once. Join other operators. Yes, sir. I'm on my way. I'm leaving for the hideaway. Get busy. It's all fixed, boss. Anything for me? Yes. I'm expecting Operator E from Amadale. Watch for him. And have the other men stand by. Yes, sir. Mr. Holden, you were brought here as a demonstration of my power. Unless you do as I say, your chances of escape are slight. I don't understand the reason for all this. What do you want of me? Your company is working on a government contract. You will turn over the plans and specifications to me. That, that's impossible. They were stolen the other night when the spider and his gang robbed my safe. You lie. If they were stolen, the newspapers would have been full of it. Holden, you need a lesson to make you tell the truth. No more. I told you the truth. I'll check the truth of your statement. says the spider stole the plans. He didn't weaken, so I guess he's telling them the truth. Well, then all we have to do is find the spider. Yeah, that's all. The cops could never do it. Come on. better to tell me what you know? You will eventually. Never. We shall see.
routine call just came and says Fred has had an out in the house on Henderson Road. Oh, get me a car, quick. Police cars, attention. Go to abandoned farmhouse, half mile off highway number nine, Henderson Road. Capture the spider. That is all. The boss is in trouble. Jackson, you and Ramsey get out there quick. Right. Jenkins, stay here. Put a record on the Kirk's office. Dick may need an alibi. What about the boys? Oh, for the moment I forgot them. Trigger, you and the boys get out. The police are on the way. It's the boss's boy. Beat it! we heard the police broadcast. Address and all, so we hightail. Uh, bright boy. The gargoyle broadcast that alarm. He wanted me captured. I never heard of him. He will from now on. I saw him. He got away because everything was prepared. What about Holden? He's safe. The police will take care of him. Now hurry home. Yes, Major. First, you tell me this uh, gargoyle tried to make you reveal government secrets. Then you tell me the spider appeared. <laughs> that don't make sense. It's my idea, they're one and the same. You're worrying needlessly, neither. No news is good news. We'd better put in another call to Commissioner Kirk's office. At least that's established an alibi. Commissioner Kirk's office. This is Richard Wentworth speaking. Is Commissioner Kirk there? No, Mr. Wentworth. He hasn't come in yet. Well, tell him I've called. I'll try again later. Goodbye. Maybe that's him. Dick! Gee, I'm glad to see you. Is everything all right? Certainly. Well, that police call frightened me. How did you escape? Oh, with the help of the boys. My story will have to wait, though, Nita. But I did get a glimpse of the one I'm after. He calls himself the Gargoyle. The Gargoyle? Yes. Well, Jackson, check on the car, will you? Right. I'm going to act on the clues I have. That's right. Jump from the frying pan into the fire. Well, I'm sorry, but it's got to be done. Hello, Jenkins. Hello, boss. Must it be Blinky again? I recognize one of the men I saw today. I know where he hangs out. I must go there as Blinky. Well, anything come in? Mr. Wentworth has been calling every few minutes. I'll call him later. Anything else? Yes, sir. Mr. Westfall from the chemical company is waiting in your office. Westfall? Yes, sir. He's very nervous. Commissioner, I'm glad you're here. You must do something at once. I'm almost crazy with worry. There, there, now. Calm yourself, Mr. Westfall. Sit down, man. Now tell me your trouble and start from the very beginning. You know my company is manufacturing nitropene gas for the government. A secret formula that guarded zealously. Yes, yes, I know that. Get to the trouble. Well, every cylinder of gas is numbered and checked and rechecked every day. Yes, yes. Well, today we discover cylinder 1167 is missing. No fire in the place. What harm would it do if it fell into outside hands? Harm? Man, it's deadly. In the hands of an enemy, it could be analyzed and duplicated. It must be traced and found. Hmm. Well, that brings us back to our big bugbear, sabotage. Yes, sir. Now, get me Mr. Wentworth at once. Yes, sir. He's the man to handle this thing. Mr. Wentworth. 
resident. Oh, just a moment, I'll call him. It's Commissioner Kirk. Commissioner Kirk, shall I put on a record? Oh, you fool. I'm here, I'm here. Hello, Commissioner. How? <laughs> I mean, hello, Commissioner. What? A cylinder of nitrogen stolen? I'll let Mr. Westfall explain. When we made the noon checkup, cylinder 1167 was missing. Well, is there any trace of it? Not a trace. Have you analyzed the product? No, but I do know its purpose. It's a new, powerful explosive, undoubtedly used for bombs. We must stop its production. But that seems impossible. It's so well guarded. <laughs> well guarded, is it? I delivered this cylinder to you to experiment with. Is everything prepared? Oh, yes, Master. Here, I will explain how it works. Explain nothing. Stand by to deliver it to the men I select for the job. Explain its workings to them. Yes, Master. Keep cruising. I may need you. Hi, Blinky. Hi, Puppy. You're quite a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> they picked me up in a roundup. I wasn't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Honest. And I need a job, too. I... Uh, tough luck. Stick around. Something ain't going on. Here. Hi, Trigger. Hi, puppy. Who's he? Oh, he's regular. Great guy. Swell workman. Uh, could you use him? Maybe later. Not now. Get rid of him quick. Hey, Blakey. You better be it. I don't want any trouble with the cops and the boys just tip me off. They're on their way. Oh, sure, sure. But thanks, pal. I, I don't want to face no cops. Tell Cobble to stay out here. Why the sudden call? Ah, uh, search me. But we won't have to wait long. The boss will phone any minute now. Do you want answering? Stefan's on the way. Should be there now with certain instrument. He'll tell you how to use it. Production must stop at five today. Everything's set to use same entrance as before. I got it, boss. What do you say? I know, that's enough. Come on. Must be him. You know what to do with this. Why all the rush? They've missed the cylinder you stole from the nitropine plant. Besides, the boss wants quick action. You know how to get in. I know, I know. Remember, once the switch is on, you can't turn it off. You have just five minutes to clear out. Let us worry about that. We'll get out all right. All right, you guys, get into those out. Lose that car. Must be putting in a new telephone cable. We've been working there for hours. What's going on at the plant? I don't know. They double the guards and everybody's jumpy. About time you guys was getting on a job, it'll soon be five o'clock. All right, we're here, ain't we? How about that fellow on guard? We'll have to pull a card trick on him. Will 
you help me out with this address? Why, no, I don't know where it is. It's right. What the? What the? Is that trap open, Sands? Guide the stairs. You the door. Come on, we'll fix it. It's gonna be a cinch. Yeah, I'll feel better when we get out of here. Discussing some fiendish deviltry with his faithful inventor? Are the Gargoyles men planning a fresh crime? Could it be the armored car? See what happens in the... Directing the act of a band of ruthless criminals, the mysterious and masked Gargoyle, backed by millions from an unknown power, attempts to wreck production for national defense. The police, baffled, seek the aid of Richard Wentworth, a famous amateur criminologist. Sometimes masquerading as the spider, thus concealing his identity from both criminals and the police, Wentworth pits his wits and strength against the gargoyle in preventing sabotage, subversive activities, and other crimes. Single-handed, the spider overpowers a gang and prevents the theft of secret government plans. Angered by his interference, the gargoyle corners the spider in a gang hideout, tips off the police to capture it.
all these files, they can see my formula. We finally got here. How'd the accident happen? It wasn't an accident. It was done deliberately. A spider! not to worry. Now see what happened. Do you know what caused the accident? Why does everyone call it an accident? It wasn't an accident. Your men are chasing the spider now. We saw him come from the plant. Hello, Kirk. Too bad, Westfall. Able to save anything? Well, the warning signal gave me a chance to save my records and formulas. That's all. Well, that's something. <laughs> Well, we got this bird anyhow. Hey, listen, I ain't done nothing. The spider kidnapped me. Ah, uh, there's a gap I'm taking it in. Sorry, Commissioner. The taxi never got out of our sight, but this bird is always trapped. No trace of the spider? Not unless this is him. You're crazy. I was kidnapped by the spider. He was going to hold me for ransom. How could I be the spider? Maybe he's telling the truth. I'd like to question him later. I'll take him in. I'm returning to headquarters to get my men to work. We're all to be commended on the way you handled your last assignment. The power behind us will be greatly pleased, and you will be rewarded accordingly. Oh, that's good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The cop's got Mika. That ain't so hard, he might sing. We'll take care of him in due time. Meanwhile, we have things to do here that are more important. Trigger. Come forward. Listen to this. Westfall chemical plant destroyed by mysterious explosion. Spider escapes. Police certain that he is the guilty one, still searching, and so forth and so forth and so on. I don't savvy that. No man could live through an explosion like that. The spider did. Right now, we must find the Holden plans. I'm convinced they were stolen by the spider. We must locate the spider's web. Secure the plans and eliminate him. Meanwhile, all of you remain on call. Well, the boss may have his own plans, but with both the spider and Wentworth on the job, we got plenty to worry about. You said it, Trigger. Now, we don't know how to reach the spider, but Wentworth ain't no mystery. We can take him out of the game dead easy, butter our own bread, and make a big hit with the boss. That's That's right. Right. I want to be fair, Dick, but up to now you've risked your life and accomplished nothing. Oh, shame on you, young lady, for making light of my ability. No, it's true I wasn't able to prevent the destruction of the nitropine plant, but I did give the warning that saved the lives of hundreds of people, as well as the books and the formulas. That's right, Nita. Uh-oh, there I go again. I beg your pardon. And what about me snatching the Holden government plans from them? And every minute you keep them here, you add to your danger. I'll take them back to Holden the first thing in the morning. Thank goodness. Let me tell Jackson and Ramsey. Oh, I sent them down to Kirk's office after the prisoner they captured today at the nitropine plant. I want to question him. After what happened to that other prisoner? Well, my only chances with one of the Gargoyle's men. I'm prepared to take my chances. Now, here's where you can help. Here's a list of the businessmen I want to have meet me at the Midvale Country Club tomorrow morning at 10, without fail. Oh. Hmm. After what happened at that last meeting, I doubt if anybody will show up. Well, they may be afraid, but they'll show up all right. The return of the Holden plans will give them new courage. You're not going to return them yourself. Oh, nothing so crude as that. Now go on with your telephoning while I get the plans from their secret hiding place. Then we'll have to lay them in off. We can do nothing until those plans are recovered. Wait a minute. Yes? Mr. Wentworth's secretary is on the line. All right. Mr. Holden speaking. This is Mr. Wentworth's secretary. 
He wants you to attend a meeting at Midvale Country Club tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Has Mr. Wentworth any news about my stolen plans? I'm sorry, sir. I'm not at liberty to say. All right. I'll be there. Thank you. my home, Stephens. Answer it. Hello? This is the residence of Mr. Whitworth's secretary wants to speak with you. Hello? Uh, Mr. Whitworth would like to have you come to a meeting at Midvale Country Club tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Has Mr. Wentworth discovered anything new? I'm not at liberty to say. Will you be there? I'll be glad to come. Thank you very much. Bad news, I Master. don't know yet. Wentworth is up to something. from the gargoyle. Your number's up. Capture the spider, his gang will disappear. And in the meantime, we're all in danger of being destroyed. We've taken every precaution. You and your plants are well guarded. So was Westfall. Stop guessing, Commissioner. McLeod is right. We must stop guessing and make plans to conquer this organization. Convince the world that this country can finish anything it starts. Come in. The messenger boy brought this for you, sir. Thank you. Don't open it. It may be a bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit down, gentlemen. I'm sure there's no danger. Well, this clears the spider. He's returning the Holden plans and specifications. 
My papers? Yes. You check the papers, Mr. Holden. Please, gentlemen, I must ask you to stand back. No one must see these papers. Fine time to think of that. They've been on the loose all this time. These are my papers, Mr. Wentworth. Every one of them complete. Oh, it's a trick of some kind. I still believe the spider is guilty. Well, then why did he return these? Because they were too hot to handle. Now that I have them back, what am I going to do with them? My place is not safe. Perhaps Wentworth will take charge of them for you. I'm afraid not. I'll be very busy if these gentlemen follow my suggestions. Why not take advantage of my bank vaults? They'll be safe there. Holden can have access to them at any time. Fine idea. Do we? Yes, that's great. But it's a long way to town. I'll phone for one of my armored cars. See your papers, Holden. We'll put them in charge of my armed guards. No, the phone may be tapped. You send the car out after you get in town. I'll stay here with Holden. Very well. I'll hurry. That's all, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your attendance. We'll all be found dead in our beds, mark my words. All right, send the chat. Hello? T1 answering? The Holden papers are being sent to town from the Midsdale Country Club in an armored car. You must get those papers. Well, boys, we got a real job on our hands. What is it now? I'll explain as we go. We gotta hurry. What about him? He's out. Wake him up! You'll be responsible for these until you reach the bank. Very good, sir. Drop you anywhere? No, thanks. We'll wait for the squad car. We'd better follow that armored car just in case. I suppose, just suppose they get through. What then? And the boys up ahead will stop them, that's certain. We've used a plan before, it always worked. Yeah, they wouldn't be fighting. You get the papers, I'll keep the much busy.
Crime School meets for instructions. Here is the new Van Sloan plane motor for national defense. Is that mechanic tinkering with the motor one of the gangsters? Directing the acts of a band of ruthless criminals, the mysterious and masked gargoyle, backed by millions from an unknown power, attempts to wreck production for national defense. The police, baffled, seek the aid of Richard Wentworth, a famous amateur criminologist. Sometimes masquerading as the spider, thus concealing his identity from both criminals and the police, Wentworth pits his wits and strength against the gargoyle in preventing sabotage, subversive activities, and other crimes. The secret government plans which the spider snatched from the gargoyle's gang are suddenly returned to the rightful owner, but not by the spider. They made it. Get ready. I'd appreciate it if you'd put them in the vault at once. But my armored car had them. Your armored car was held up and wrecked. I managed to get them out safely. This is preposterous, a disgrace. The police, I... The police are on the job. These are your responsibility now. Put them in the vault at once, please. Uh, right away. At once, if you don't mind. I'll go with you. Uh, I certainly, of course. I... Well, Mr. Winfield, I, I can't understand a thing like this. It, uh, it never happened before in all these... Yes, yes, I know all that. But filled with nitropene gas, my invention can make it explode at any sound. A siren, music, a clap of the hand, anything. Now pick out a sound that I will demonstrate. The chimes on that clock will soon strike. Is that enough? Perfect. Now stand back, Master. This contains only five drops. All we can stand but safety. Now way back, way back. It won't happen till the fourth stroke. The first three are needed to tune it. You're a genius. Prepare several globes, large ones. I'll have use for them, I'm sure. Can't you delay this, Dick? You promised Uncle you'd attend the demonstration of his new airplane motor tonight. I'm sorry, Anita. You go. I have possession of the crook's car, and that gives me an opening. I have to take advantage of it. Jackson, did you check that new recording for defects? Yes, sir. It's as clear as a bell. Of course, it doesn't make sense. Well, if I'm a good salesman, it will. Now, listen. I'll call back his blinky within the hour. All of you wait my call. When it comes in, Nita, listen closely for my code. Follow instructions to the letter. 
Okay. Good luck. Good luck, Major. Hey, Blakey, you shouldn't be Hold here, everything. Man. Hold everything. You and me's got a lot in common. I know, but every time... Oh, but nothing. I need help. Any of them guys back there? How did you know? Oh, I'm only blind in one eye. I know plenty. I got a car up front them guys could use. Come on, do your stuff. This is Blakey McQuaid, a regular. You get no kickback dealing with him. Yeah, thanks for the build-up, but it wasn't strong enough. I'm plenty good. Oh, I like me, eh? Well, stop blowing your horn. What do you got? A fast job, cheap, nifty for your work. You know nothing about my work, says you. I get around. Come on out, I'll show you the boat. There she is, a nifty, a ball of fire. I'll sell it to you cheap. What a gall you got. What do you mean, gall? Oh, what's the big idea? I'll teach you to... Triggy, you bring the cops. Ah, that guy's crazy. He had no reason to jump me. You call trying to sell me my own car no reason? You're crazy for trying it. I'll prove I'm not. You left the key in the switch. Where'd you pick it up? As if you didn't know. Behind a commercial bank building. Take your old car. I had all my work for nothing. Wait. I'll pay you for finding the car. Ah, save it and buy yourself a haircut. Ah, I might as well go the whole way. There's your watch. Yeah, it is. You call yourself big time. I lifted it easy. You're just cocky enough to be useful. How far would you go for some real dough? Yeah, you couldn't pick a spot I wouldn't go. We'll find out. Nobody comes in till I give the word. Okay, come sir. on. <laughs> it's nifty, huh? Yeah. Sit down. Oh, you've been around, huh? Sure. Did you ever hear of Richard Wentworth? Did the scientific guy what gives no goods to Willies? Yeah. <laughs> now you're talking class. Him and me as buddies. I'm one of his stoolies. Ah, uh, don't get excited. I ain't no squealer. I just tip him off on some of the small fry to clutter up my work. It gives me an in and favors when I'm picked up. Can you contact him? Sure, sure. <laughs> we got a regular meeting place. Good. We want him taken care of. If you'll do the job, my boss will make you rich. Does that appeal to you? <laughs> Money talks. Ain't no trouble to show samples. Hey, does this gadget work? Yeah. Well, the sooner the quicker, I always say. <laughs> Would you like to listen in? <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> that must be him. Mr. Wentworth's residence. Oh, well, just a moment, I'll call it. Wentworth speaking. This is Blinky McQuaid again. Hello, Blinky. What's on your mind? I got a line on something good. Would you be interested in a swell set of books? Always, if they're important and the price is right. Important? I'll say they are. It's a first edition worth a grand. It must be good. I'll give it a look tonight at 7 o'clock. Same place? Don't forget, tonight, 7 o'clock. Goodbye. There. Yeah. Just like that. Say, I believe you are good. Got a gun? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty one. Hey, that's my gun. Sure, I just borrowed it. I knew I had to have one. Oh. We'll go to my joint. I want to keep my eye on you until this job's done. Fair enough. Jackson, you are to keep the appointment. Sterling Warehouse. Make up to impersonate Mr. Wentworth. It wouldn't be the first time. I hope that suit's pressed. Hey, what's wrong with that? This time, you're going to be shocked. <laughs> I hope he misses. Uh, so do I. Well, I'd better get busy on the makeup. Give me a hand, will you, Jack? I'm betting he don't show. Ah, uh, he's always on time. There. Yeah. What'd I tell you? Now slip out of sight so I can do this the easy way. Well, seeing's believing.
Ah, hello, Blinky. I'm right on time. Have you got the coin? Well, let me see the bill of goods first. I may not want a deal. All right, if you want to be that way. Same old Blinky, full of mystery. Well, what's your proposition? You're looking for the higher up in this sabotage ring, ain't you? Yes. If you have news of him, I'll double this. Tell me quick. I ain't telling you nothing. You butted in once too often, see? Is he finished? What do you think? Well, I'm going to make sure. Give me that cat. Pete! I let him come out, so. Come on, you fool. We ain't killing no cops. I... Let me take a pop at him, will you? I take the best pop. Oh, let me wait. Come on, let me wait. They went that way, Commissioner. Get after them. <laughs> that was great acting, Ryan. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Come on, Jackson. The bad men have gone. And uh, money didn't interest them. It looks as if it worked. Yes, but if you'd been a minute later, my goose would have been cooked. That tough mug trigger wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Step on a trigger, the boss has been called. He's hopping mad because you wasn't here. You didn't blab, did you? Of course not. You think we're crazy? One will get you ten at jar. <laughs> get him! <laughs> Why scratch that, huh? Forget it. Deal me in, huh? G1 calling DIC. G1 calling DIC. G1 calling DIC. At last, you report. You were to await my call. Your excuse had better be good. It is. The chance came to finish Wentworth. He's through. They carted him off in a basket. So I learned from a police broadcast. Your idiotic action in shooting a policeman will receive my attention later. Oh, my, oh, my. Now, listen. This is important. All right, boss. We're all listening. Tonight at 8.30, Van Sloan is demonstrating his new motor before government experts. Bring men at once and pick up tools and deliver at the plant. Plans made to destroy motor and spectators during demonstration. All right, boss, we're on our way. You three come with me. Hey, what about me? I'm in, you promise. With me, yes. With the boss, no. You're not invited to this blowout. You're staying here. Sands and Coble are staying here to keep your company. Now, come on, we've got no time to lose. Wait a minute. Want you watch? Hey, want your gun, too? You think of everything. The boss's blowouts usually mean blow-ups. And there's always a chance of it skinning us, too. Yeah. Well, maybe you're right. How about a smoke? I haven't got any. You got any? Packs up. Thanks. Won't be long, folks. Pardon me. Sure. Nearly time to start, Nita. Looks like Dick won't get here. Oh, he'll be here. I'm sure he will. He promised. Class, you're here. You had me worried. Any, you stay out here and keep your eyes open. Now get in there and wait. Wait! Boss's orders. I used to be pretty good at telling fortunes. A lot of the things I see come through. Get out of sight in case anything happens. <laughs> I see a great big surprise. Well, how about it? Oh, this is a waste of time. He's not going to phone. I'm still betting he does. Hello, Kirk. This is Wentworth. Is Jackson there? Yes, Jackson's here. Well, I haven't time to explain. Get to Van Sloan's plant at once. They're going to destroy it. 
8.30's the deadline. Get there with men quickly. Fly, man, fly! To Van Sloan's plant. We have just six minutes to make it. Mr. Henderson, the inventor of this marvelous new motor, will explain its advantages. Mr. Henderson. I will not be technical. This motor has a dual power control. It starts on gasoline, and when it reaches a certain momentum, it switches over to an electrical power, which is supplied and broadcast from ground stations. Oh, Speed out of this car, warrior. What is on the floor now, Major? Well, push it through. Everything ready, Hayes? Yes, sir. Contact. suspect the danger which lurks behind that door? Well, he does now. What threatening message, and to whom, is the gargoyle broadcasting? Don't miss the gargoyle's trail. Directing the acts of a band of ruthless criminals, the mysterious and masked gargoyle, backed by millions from an unknown power, attempts to wreck production for national defense. The police, baffled, seek the aid of Richard Wentworth, a famous amateur criminologist. Sometimes masquerading as the spider, thus concealing his identity from both criminals and the police, Wentworth pits his wits and strength against the gargoyle in preventing sabotage, subversive activities, and other crimes. To prove his ruthlessness to the gargoyle, Blinky shoots Wentworth, then a police officer. This ruse delays the spider in getting to the demonstration of Van Sloan's new airplane motor. sent the warning.
back. I don't want anyone killed. He can't get away because the place is surrounded. Come out now with your hands up. Look out, he might be bluffing. Lift him up. I might have known it. Those crooks have a head start, and we have to arrive there first. No need to worry. I took the precaution to disable their motor. They'll have carburetor trouble. Good. You always remember the little things I forget. You know what to do. Faith. the drink. It's given too much trouble. Stop thief, and it got us there, didn't it? Yeah, uh, fine boat to make a getaway. You no, know, a car in that shape could ruin us. Well, why tell me about it? Fine watch dogs. I don't get this. Wake them up. Come on, get out of here. Get out of here. Speak up. Haven't you gone yet? Gone? We're back. What's happened to you? Search me. Oh, I remember. Blinky was telling our fortune. Oh, I feel like I had a Mickey Finn. Yeah, me too. Drinking, huh? All he did was smoke one of his cigarettes. Yeah. Hand them over. You don't need to get so rough, Trigger. Here they are. Are these the ones? That's yeah. It. This is Cahill's cigarette case. How'd you get it? Well, I borrowed it from him before you went. That'll teach him to play tricks. I'm going to call the boss. Imagine him doing a thing like that. The unfairness of it all. G1 calling DIC. G1 calling DIC. DIC answering. Everything's Jake. The motor went sky high. The spider butted in as usual, but we finished him. Nothing of the kind. He escaped. The radio is tingling with the news. Let us hope that you haven't left the trail. Now listen, against my definite orders, one of you killed an officer. That man must be eliminated. Trigger, you do the job and leave the gun you use with the body. I think you're making a mistake. He's proven himself a good man. He's proven himself a fool. Don't argue. That is all. <laughs> He's quite a kid, ain't he? <laughs> What's the angle? There ain't no angle. And he wasn't kidding. You guys go on. Scatter till things cool off. I'll contact you later at 67. Yeah, but, but what about me? You promised me, Trigger. I'm supposed to be in. You are, Blinky. You're all in. Hey, what's all this about? If you're putting on an act to scare me, I don't scare, see? This ain't no act. Not my idea. You heard him. I hate to do this, but orders are orders. It's too bad, but... Gee, I sure feel sorry for that guy, Blinky. Oh, it's tougher on Trigger. He's got to do it. It's over. <laughs> You 
please, please. I was only following orders. We're too late. We're trapped. I'm going to get you a break you wouldn't give me. Get out. I'll hold them off. Oh, thanks, Blinky. Come and get me. Come on, put your hands up. You haven't got a chance. All right. Don't shoot. I'm coming. Great work, boys. You timed it perfectly. Thanks, Mr. Whitefoot, but I don't get it. Another moment, we'd have trapped the whole gang. Oh, don't worry about that. That's part of our plan. Now let's go back to our act. All set? Okay. Drive fast. I've got to get out of this makeup. What you tell me is most interesting. This one-eyed blinky must be fearless. Perhaps it's just as well that you were not able to kill him. Ah, oh, he's a whiz, Chief. Why, he had me cold. And when the cops showed up, he let me get away while he battled them. And they got him? No, he got away clean. I'm for it. I think I'll do the thinking. Here, put this on. What's this for? It's not necessary if you don't know what it's for. Put it on. No offense. Now, the next time you run across this blinky, let me know and I'll look him over. Yes, sir. And I'll get out. I must return to my place of business before I miss it. Yes, Master. Seven. I just installed your belt on one of the men. Does that worry you? Oh, no, Master. My invention is completed. I welcome a chance to prove its merit. All in good time. I'm leaving now. Don't talk riddles. Get to the point. All right, I will. It's my sincere conviction that the man at the head of this sabotage ring is right here in this room. Well, 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 That's a pretty serious statement, Wentworth. I hope you have the evidence to substantiate it. I have, but you didn't let me finish, Commissioner. You all recall that we sent for an armored car to take the holding papers to the vault. Only those in this room knew that the car had been sent for. Yet, in a few minutes, the car was held up and wrecked. You're all under suspicion until the facts prove you innocent. That doesn't apply to me. I was kidnapped and I should know this gargoyle. I'm in the clear. That's your story, Mr. Holden. But lacking proof, you, like the others, are under suspicion. What? Now listen, Quiet. that is the main thing. I don't think I have ever heard. You're all fools. Meeting and planning. Take warning. Cancel your government contract, or I will destroy you all. The word of the gargoyle is final. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you, a bunch of children to be scared by a boogeyman? Sit down. This is further proof of what I told you. This room is closely guarded. No one allowed inside except the members now present. Yet one of you placed this record and pulled the thread to start it, hoping to frighten the rest of us. It looks as though it was a success. Well, now, any of you are free to leave, but I'm telling you this. We're going to battle this menace, however powerful it may be. Let the guilty one take notice. My life's an open book. Turn the pages one by one as you find nothing but clean, honest efforts to aid my adopted country in its hour of need. So don't waste your time watching me. As to the others, I'm not so sure. Thank you, Mr. McCobb. You're entirely welcome. Oh, pardon me. Oh, thank you. Are you crazy or am I? I can only speak for myself. 
Well, admitting you believe your statement, why tell them about it? You put the guilty man on his guard. Well, that was my intention. Every hour of defense production is vital. The gargoyle must be destroyed quickly. You must do something to force his hand. Make him act desperately so that we can stop him. Well, I'll do all I can, but I won't remain in the dark. Well, I don't intend that you shall. I have one certain man under suspicion. His name is... Dick. You were right. He joined two rough looking men who were waiting in his sedan, and he ordered his chauffeur to hurry to his home. Good boy. We'll go right over there. I'll see you later, Commissioner. You are going to tell me his name. You stick close to your office, and if things work out, I'll bring you more than a name. Sometimes works miracles. We'll break in. We're going to feel awfully silly if you're wrong. We'll have to take that chance. Come on. What happened? Quick! The master! They carried him off! Well, well, well. Your bird is blown the coop. Now, don't let appearances fool you. Look for clues. What do you make of this? The butler told the truth. Maybe. What's this? It's a map of some road. <laughs> the map of a place is familiar to me. That's the place where they had Holden. Well, what's stopping? Is it all adds up as plain as day? Yeah, it's too plain. It's a trap, Jackson. My warning today must have frightened him. He decided that I had to be done away with. Yeah, well, it's lucky you discovered it. Do you mind if I stick your neck out? <laughs> Yes and no. What's on your mind? We'll walk into a trap, all right. And I'll need your help. Okay, let's go. Stop, fella. Well, there's the house. It's gonna be tough. You scared? Scared to death. But I enlisted for the duration, so here I go. Good luck. Now, are you sure the trail was plain? You have to be an idiot to miss it. Guy, it's coming, but it ain't Wentworth. Probably this helper. We'll teach him a lesson. Remember your places. Right. You were right. 
Van Sloan is the gargoyle. Uh, I was wrong, dead wrong. Don't you see he's in a trance, some sort of a hypnotic trance. But I heard him talk. Ah, oh, that fooled me too. The voice came from that speaker. Oh. He needs medical attention. Get him to a doctor right away. They may come back. I'll chance that. I'm going to trace the wiring from the speaker to its source. Now hurry. They're falling for us. Better than I hoped for. inventor is demonstrating the mysterious X-ray eye machine. The boss is angry at what he sees. Why should this gangster want to stop the truck? Don't fail to see the X-ray eye. Uh, Dr. What's up? Uh, this bed is missing something. No sheet, Sherlock. Oh. Back already? That was the first part of The Spider Returns with Warren Hall again as Richard Wentworth, the Spider. Join us next week for part two of three of The Return of the Spider. Take care, be kind to each other, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again for tuning in. And if you can, go to Don's Breakfast Cereal Show or Donald O'Malley on YouTube. Hit like and subscribe and you'll never miss one of my shows. So thanks again. We'll see you hopefully next time. Here we go.